I'm going to actually. So I'm going to it. attempt to say some Swedish, Anna. Oh, wow. You write Swedish too. It's good. <laughs> Very good. Impressive. All oh, right. Well, it's not much, you know, we don't get too excited about it. Swedish sometimes. It's just such a great language. So, yeah, yeah. Fun. That, that's yeah. The, the, the hardest thing now because I'm so used to doing it in Swedish. So, yeah, probably I will be mixing, but it's OK. The view. So we're going to be starting with Anna in and she's going to be doing the physical warm up for us. And then we're going to carry on with Kimberly, who will be doing the vocal warm up. You will be able to ask questions at any time if you pop something in the comments column of YouTube and we've got monitors who are ready to pounce on anything that you say and they will be able to feed them uh, to our presenters. So um, you'll, you'll be able to ask questions. That'll be fantastic for you. There'll also be an opportunity at the end to have a chat with Kim and Anna and if you want to ask more questions then or just just say hello to them um that that'll be great too that'll be for about 15 minutes okay brilliant so i'm going to introduce our first presenter for the afternoon who is anna anna alvring from sweden um and of course it's one of the unexpected benefits of our lockdown that we've been able to um, zoom in people from all over the world it's just amazing and um, our first warm upper is coming all the way from, well, from her brother's summer house in a very remote part of Sweden at the moment, which has Wi-Fi, thank goodness. And um, Anna is the director of the three times international chorus champion from Runninga, Sweden. And uh, she was, she's been co-director of the chorus for, um, a number of years, actually, about 14 years, was it, Anna, that you yes. were, yeah? Um, and of course, Britalen retired, Britalen Bonadal retired in January last year, and Anna is now the, um, the full-time frontline director of Runninga. Um, she's also a music and maths teacher, and is now, I'm amazed to find out, and congratulations, um, she's actually the principal of the prestigious music school in Stockholm, the Adolf Friedrich School. So you're in for a treat. So here's my Swedish coming up now. So, Welkommen, Anna. Och, tack så mycket. Bra! <laughs> mycket bra! Tack! <laughs> Thank you, thank you, and I'm so honoured to be here today with all of you. And Renninge says hi, uh, with love to everyone. We are fine, we are doing fine with Zoom, and we are in Jamalus singing together, actually. And that's so important, because it's so important to be uh, igång in Swedish. You have to be singing and moving and doing things with your instrument. And we are still the, the champs, so I have the, the medal today. Well, you are so welcome. And I'm asked to do a warm up and warm up session physical. Uh, we are using uh, one song in our rehearsals, and we have three different persons, so we get a variation. And now I'm going to do three songs with you because I have the time, and that's fantastic. So, why do we warm up our bodies? We do it because we have we want to have a tension release, we want to get on the move with our bodies, we want to get the blood flowing so that our instrument, the singing instrument, is well prepared for doing it the best. So if you are, and, and also it's coordination, focus, and it's a joyful start. So I want to ask you to stand up now, or if you can't stand up, you can do the moves where you are. We are going to do the first song and I'm your mirror. So I do the moves and you just mirror ring me. Um, yes, so we, I think it's also it's important to, to choose a song that's rhythmic. Uh, it's a good pulse. Uh, and I've chosen Megan Trainer uh, better when I'm dancing for this one. So before we start, just put your arms up in the sky. 
look up in the sky. Just uh, close your eyes, breathe, and think of something good, something joyful, something that you like. Breathe, and then open your eyes and have some space because we are going to move now. Move to Megan Trainer, and here we go. another one that's a bit bigger and in our course we have as I said three different uh, persons so the, the songs is also chosen to be different and that's so good um, I, I try to when I do the warm-ups also to do moves uh, that are repeating themselves so the same moves in the refrain the same moves in the verse so that i think that's a good thing to do too so i think we should uh, go on and the next song it's don't worry with mac Badcon. and that one is going to be a little bit more you have to have a little bit more space i think so i'm going to do like that because we are going to move a bit to the side to clap in the refrain like this. I think you can see me. Okay, so let's do the other one. Don't worry. <laughs> Take it to the future, forget about the past, and keep on 
somehow and just follow me. I can say I'm sorry. Someone made all insecure. This was so long. Now I'm not that sure. I never cried in front of you. And now I'm soaked in all these things. But you can shed a drop for me. Yeah, I need you loud and clear. I miss the way that you feel, but I won't be up there. It's gonna hurt when I see you again. This is someone else. You don't know to wear. 
in Zoom, you can do more like with your arms and so on and with your face. So uh, I wanted to say thank you so much for having me. Uh, it, it's an honor. I'm so happy. And I hope to see you in Phoenix. I hope we are doing a swan set over there. Uh, so that would be fabulous. And if you have any questions, just pop, pop them on, pop them on. And keep on singing, keep on moving, keep on doing things with your voice, because that's so important in these times. And stay safe, take care. And Kim, it's your turn. I think I'll <laughs> say something first. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. I don't know how you can manage to do all those vigorous movements, speak English, and actually have enough breath as well to <laughs> shout out all the instructions. So well done. Thank you, Thank you so, so much. much. I, hope so, I hope it works. It was Thank brilliant. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm sure that people will have questions as well to ask um, Anna right at the very end. I know I've got some. Um, okay, so over to Kim now. Now, You'll recognise Kim because she sings with the Ladies Quartet, um, who were Rising Star Champions in 2016, all right over in New Zealand. Amazing. What, a, what an amazing trip that must have been, Kim, to go all that way and then to win and come back with your gold medal. So welcome to Region 31. Um, Kim also sings with um, a mixed quartet called Half and Half and is also the director of the Capital City Chorus in Indianapolis in the United States. So I, I believe you actually live in Indianapolis as well, do you, Kim? Yeah, I do. Yeah, and, um, and you might have seen that Kim is the owner of the New Voice Studio and Kim has so generously donated a whole load of fabulous warm-ups that she's um, put on her YouTube channel. Um, I really recommend it if you've not seen them yet. They're just amazing. I've used loads of them um, and I've always given you credit for them as well. Um, but you've, you've been uh, really instrumental in helping people throughout the pandemic to keep in touch with their voice and, and help them with uh, to re retain all their vocal skills. So thank you so much for that. Um, so so over to Kim. I know that um, she's going to have a, a, a fantastic time with you all. Um, and again, if you've got questions, if there's anything you'd like to ask Kim or Anna at the end, please write them in the in the chat and we'll make sure that we answer them. So let's give a big Region 31 welcome to Kim Newcomb. Yay! Thank you so much for having me and thank you so much for your kind words. It really means a lot to me that I can feel of use and helpful to everyone in these really weird and crazy times. So I hope um, everybody enjoyed what Anna did as much as I was. I was moving and getting my groove on, getting ready, because you know your body is your instrument. So it's really, really important that you warm up physically and you warm up vocally 
every time. Um, so I'm really glad that we got to be paired together. But before we get to the singing part, I want to talk a little bit about some technique stuff because I think that too often we get to warm up time and we think, okay, I'm gonna spend the next 10 minutes singing through the same five exercises we always do because I know that they'll get me to where I need to be versus being really intentional about focusing on a skill for each exercise that you're doing so you can implement it. Um, and some really fundamental things that help you get set up for success in singing are alignment and breathing. So I'm gonna to touch on those before we get to singing. So, if you're at home, I hope you're still standing from the awesome physical warmups because we're going to stand now to talk about alignment. I'm sure you've heard a lot of this before, but hopefully something new will click for you. And I'm going to talk about four main points that you want to keep in a line ish while you're singing. And those are your ankles, your hips, your shoulders and your ears. But before we get to ankles, I want you to think about your weight being equally distributed over four points of your feet. So there's one under each of the balls of your feet and one under each of the heels of your feet. And some people like to have one foot in front of the other. Some people like to have them parallel. It's really up to you. And if you're at home and you're not able to stand right now, but you're still singing, focus on keeping from your hips up really aligned. So when we get there, that'll be important. Um, first, I want you as you are standing to shift all of your weight to the balls of your feet. So you're leaning forward, but I don't want you to fall over. Okay. Now I want you to try and take a deep breath and relax and come back to center. Okay. Now you're going to put all of the weight on the heels of your feet, but don't fall over and try and take a deep breath and out. Okay, shake it out. Now I want you to distribute the weight equally between those four points, kind of over the arches of your feet. You're just standing, you're chilling, and now you're going to take a nice deep breath. And out. So what you should have felt is that it was a lot easier when you were not engaging your abs by leaning too far forward or too far back. So often when we get excited and ready to perform and they announce our chorus and the lights come up and we're like, yes, we're ready to sing. But then alignment is kind of off. <laughs> so um, it's totally fine to be excited and have a beautiful uh, posture, ready to go posture. But just thinking about these points is important. But the point is that you want your weight equally distributed so that you don't force your abdominal muscles to engage and therefore take away the opportunity for a nice low breath. So if you equally distribute your weight, your ankle should be in the right-ish place as we ascend up the body. Make sure that your knees are nice and buoyant. Those aren't really a place for alignment. It's just something to remember so that we don't pass out because if you lock your knees, sometimes people pass out and that's bad. We don't want any of you to be not safe. We want you all to be very safe. So you have your ankles, you have buoyant knees. And then when you get to your hips, your hips are like a bowl shaped bone. So we don't want anything to fall out of the bowl because bowls are meant to hold something. So imagine your favorite cereal or your favorite soup or something that has a liquid component to it and you don't want it to fall out of your bowl. We want this to remain in a really neutral position, but we're going to experiment like Goldilocks and the three bears with different kinds of extremes. So go ahead and tilt your hips to the front like this. And what that equates to is that your butt's kind of sticking out, right? This isn't, this isn't a, this is not alignment. And so we're not going to do that. That's too far. If you rotate your hips the opposite way, so kind of under, you're tucking your tailbone underneath. This is what happens when we're just sort of chilling. If you're ever on the back of the risers and you have the, uh, the rods to lean against, this might be you two and a half hours into rehearsal normally. <laughs> but this is also too far back. We want them to be somewhere in the middle. And for me, for you, it's gonna be different. Our bodies are all different and special and unique. So whatever feels the best to you is only something that you can explore. But to find that neutral hip position, I usually do something where I lean too far forward. My knees are locked. I guess you can't really see that. My knees are locked a little bit. And then I tuck my tailbone under until my knees unlock. And then that's pretty much a neutral place. So experiment with that for yourself. 
So we've got ankles, we've got buoyant knees, we've got neutral hips. And then the next thing I want to talk about is shoulders, which Anna did a great job of warming up when we were doing this over and over again. These are the two extremes, right? You can have too far forward, which happens when maybe we're a little nervous and feel free to do this with me at home where you're kind of just protecting yourself. This comes from when there were lions and tigers and bears and we had to protect our internal organs. You don't have to worry about that in barbershop. We're all safe, we don't have that. So this is too far forward where your shoulders are no longer in line with your hips and your ankles. Now I want you to go too far back, which to me is the, I'm ready to sing. And then it looks like you're ready for sure, but your shoulders are way far behind your hips. So that's a little too much. We're going for Goldilocks, right? Just right. So somewhere between too far back and too far forward. Usually I just think about letting my arms hang, the tips of my fingers being somewhere near the seam of my pants. I'm wearing yoga pants, but if you have real pants, they'll probably be right there. But again, ankles, buoyant knees, neutral hips, happy medium shoulders. And then the last point to talk about is your ears. So your ears, this is one I didn't hear about until I got into barbershop and started listening to people like Steve Scott and Rob Mance and all those vocal tech gurus. But we are so used to looking at our phones or sitting at our desks and having our head sit too far in front of the rest of our body. So what happens though, is every degree that you're leaning your head forward, you are essentially adding weight that your muscles have to hold up, right? So if you can imagine having to balance a bowling ball on top of a broomstick, like your skeletal system, we want to distribute the weight of your noggin throughout your skeletal system instead of forcing these muscles to engage because your voice box, your larynx, your vocal cords are right here. And if these muscles are having to tighten to hold your head up, it's likely that that tension could translate to your vocal cords and we don't want that, right? So a couple ways to find that perfect spot is you can take one hand, put it on your opposite shoulder. And this is just to relax and rest there. You're gonna rest this arm on this arm, make an L, rest that arm, and then put it right here, not under your chin, not on your mouth, but right below your mouth. And we're resting this arm on this arm. So you think about your ankles, your hips, your shoulders, and then this keeps your head above, keeps your ears above your shoulders. Now it probably feels a little rigid and that's okay. This is just a tool to help us find this, right? So that's one way, another way shake it out. Another way that you can do that if that feels a little too intense to you is you can take your hands like this, put your pinky on your sternum and your thumb on your chin. And it essentially does the same thing. So I used to sing and I was singing like, yeah, da, 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 da. I would take breaths and my head would shoot out like this air is better than this air. I don't know. But if you're like me, this is a tool that you can use either this one or this one. So at home, wherever you are, I want you to shake out your body. Now forget everything I just said and pretend that you have been rehearsing for two hours. You're kind of tired, maybe a little vocally fatigued. You're not like at your prime ready best. You're just kind of chilling. So maybe your alignment isn't perfect yet. Okay, that's where we're at. Now I want you with that thought in mind to go, Ooh, try it with me. Ooh, good. Now I want you to think about all the things we said. Equally distribute the weight between your feet. Make sure you have buoyant knees. Find that neutral hip placement, whatever you need to do. Think about having a happy medium between your shoulder positions. They're just hanging out. And then whatever tool you liked best, either this one or this one. And I want you to go, Try it. Ooh. Now you can shake it out. So I could only hear myself, obviously, and I don't know if you heard me, but I heard a difference in my voice and I hope you heard a difference in your voice. All of this is just to set us up for success, right? The 
next thing besides alignment that's really important is breathing and breathing i just want you to remember two things we want low breaths and we want quiet breaths the reason we went low breaths has a lot to do with something called tracheal pull which i think is super cool and i want you all to take a hand put it on your neck and swallow go ahead and swallow again see if you feel something moving around you can put your hand down what you should have felt, even if it was a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of movement, is that your larynx went up and down when you swallowed. Your larynx is super cool. It's just floating around in all of this muscle. I don't know if you've ever played with your kneecaps before when you're like sitting on the ground and you can move them around because they're just floating in cartilage or whatever. But your larynx is like that too. And you don't need to do this at home, but I'll show you. It just floats this part floats around and it's hanging out in your muscle. So the larynx sits on top of the trachea, which is the tube that gets air from out here to your lungs. Your trachea is attached to your lungs. And when those expand, your diaphragm contracts down, moves all of your guts and organs out of the way. And that's why when you take a deep breath, your tummy goes out, which is great and fabulous and what we should all be doing. So I want you to take one hand, put it here. I want you to take your other hand, put your thumb on your belly button and then let your hand go below that. Now take a deep breath into this hand and see what you feel up here. Breathe in and out and in and out. Shake it out. I'm going to sit down. You're welcome to sit or keep standing, whatever you feel will be most successful for you. But what you should have felt is that when you took a deep breath, your larynx descended just a little bit. And if you didn't feel that, that's okay too. Maybe that means that there's some extra tension that we got to work on and feel out. But the point is, if you can make it habitual for you to take low and quiet breaths, it's going to be a checkpoint throughout all of your songs to help reset your body to be really successful so that you don't have tension, you don't have anything getting in your way, and you can just let your beautiful voice ring out and proud, okay? So I want you to think about, as we're doing these exercises, alignment and breathing. Try to take low breaths because a lowered larynx is a sign of, um, not a forced lowered larynx, like when you yawn and you think about that, that definitely lowers your larynx, but it also causes tongue tension. That's a whole nother thing. Um, we want to take low breaths and we want to take quiet breaths because when you breathe and you hear, <laughs> that's like a lot of tension. When you hear the <gasps> happening, it means that your vocal cords didn't get out of the way fast enough. And we want to alleviate tension so that they can get out of the way and you can just have a breath and it's nice and easy. But it takes a lot of focus and practice. I remember having um, Steve Scott come coach my chorus and we spent like 30 minutes starting the ballad and just trying to get a handle on that quiet breath. So if you're not amazing at it right away, that's okay. It still needs to be something that you're thinking about. So we're thinking about alignment, low breaths for that tracheal pull and quiet breaths to encourage a lack of tension in your singing. We're gonna start with a bubble because bubbling is my favorite or elliptical is the technical term, but it's so much more fun to say bubble. We're gonna go and I wanna start in the middle of the range and ascend higher, okay? So I'm, a big fan of exploring all of your range almost every time you sing. So I'm gonna take you up to the tippy top of your range. And if you're not a tenor, I still want to encourage you to sing as high as you can comfortably. But I always start with a bubble because it's really hard to hurt yourself with a bubble and it's just really great for healthy singing. The exercise goes like this. <laughs> And if you have a hard time bubbling, you can take the pads of your fingertips, put them on your jaw, up and then forward, and you have more to work with. Sometimes that helps, sometimes it doesn't. If it's helpful, take it. If it's not, don't worry about it. You can also do a tongue trill if that's hard for you or sing on vv. Ready, here we go.
higher but I want to give you a tool because I see so beautifully that Anna is standing and moving her body and I know we just talked about alignment and it's really important but you got to figure out how to do that in not a way that tenses your body right so you can still be aligned and thinking about all this stuff and moving your body collectively in one way or another and you still maintain alignment at the top part which is really important but if this is getting high for you, you can also engage your leg muscles to alleviate tension. What I mean by that is when you get to the high note or you're getting higher, so bend your knees when it gets a little bit high. I'm not talking a squat, we're not going to the gym, just like a little bit of a bend will engage these muscles so that perhaps these muscles don't tense up. Ready, here we go. bubble. If you hit that last note, you just sang a high C. Woo! I think that almost everyone I've ever worked with is able to access that part of their range specifically on a bubble because when you're bubbling, you can't tense anything up. If I laugh, <laughs> you know, your lips come apart, right? So you have to make sure every part of your face and your body, and there's muscles connecting your chest to your face and your head to your back. And there's just so much opportunity for tension. But when you're bubbling, it really encourages those to relax. And therefore, it shows you how you can all hit the high notes. You're all super capable. You just got to play with it. All right. We're going to go back to the middle of our range and sing on a v v v v v v v so when you slide from five to one or so to do make sure you get all of the notes in between it's a true glissando okay uh, ready here we go v v v v v v v v v v Another really good exercise for encouraging healthy vocal fold closure, which is also what bubbling does. So if you're ever in doubt, start on a bubble, start on a v, start on a tongue trill, something like that. But I like to do that one in the middle to just explore um, that part of the range specifically. But we are going to sing a little bit lower because although I am not a bass, I aspire to be, and I know that there are many of you out there um, I sing all of my bass parts for my learning tracks in the morning. It is morning time here though, so maybe I'll be able to go lower than normal. But we're going to start in the middle-ish lower part of our range and just sing on da, 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 ready, here we go, da, da, da. You can do it. Keep going. One more. Again, I'm not a bass, but I really, really, really liked watching Allison sing that. <laughs> if 
you hit that note, that was a low C. So that means if you hit that low note and you hit the high note, you have three octaves of range. You are so capable, you don't even know it. You just have to explore the extremes of your range to strengthen the middle. A couple more for you. Tim, five minutes, five minute warning. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. Second to last exercise, we are going to start with a hum and slide. So I think that after you work the extremes of your range very intentionally with healthy and efficient technique, it's back, good to come back to the middle and sort of relax everything that you've been working on. So we're just going to slide from one to three to five to three to one or do me so me do. So it'll sound like this. you get all those notes in between make sure that you have a little bit of space between your teeth and that your lips are just coming together they aren't being forced together we're alleviating any and all tension ready here we go going up this is a really great exercise to see if you can take a nice quiet breath because we have lots of time to do it right there's no rush and up here we go was very focused and relaxed and I hope that you were focused and relaxed. The last exercise I want to sing with you today has multiple vowels. So every time I plan warm-up exercises, even for myself, I always start with a bubble or a tongue trill or a v, and then I move to singing that with some sort of vowel, like when we did v, 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 v. I like E because it encourages vocal fold closure. If you ever deal with air in your sound or anything like that, E is your best friend. Um, then go to something that's relaxing and then use multiple vowels because we sing on multiple vowels. Like we can't go through a whole song unless maybe it's a pop song and we have everyone that is not singing the melody on like do, do, da, ba, da, ba. Basses are really good at singing on vowels, right? But we can't only sing on one. So this next exercise has a couple of them. Uh, it starts on an E, ends on an A, ah, so we're trying to transfer that vocal efficiency of an E to the A. Ah. Sounds like this. So let those V's at the end allow you to have some fun and some freedom, but we're starting on the E and trying to keep the A ah feeling the same when you open up to it, all right? One more time to listen if you didn't hear that pattern is e it's just a scale. Ready, here we go. Oh, <laughs> 
last one. Thank you so much for spending your morning singing with me and everyone else on this awesome team. I'm super excited that I got to be here and I'm super excited to hang out and answer some questions later too. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Kim. That was brilliant. Uh, amazing, um, wonderful and simple as well. So, you know, that's what we want. Things that are, that are easily remembered and things that we can all you can, we can all use in our everyday rehearsing. Um, so just having a look to see if there have been any questions coming up on the chat. Um, I've got one actually, um, and if, in fact, it's for Anna, um, because what, while Kim was doing those awesome vocal easers, you were doing loads of kinesthetics. Yes. So um, that was that was really good. So do you do that? Do you tend to do that every rehearsal with Runninger? Yeah, yeah, we do. We we work a lot of with our bodies to to as you said, Kim. It's to to be tensionless. It's so important for our, our voices. And, and I just love how you, Kim, also work with the camera and with the the whole room. It's so <laughs> it's so nice. I think we have to. And I think with this Zoom uh, thing we have, and and we have Jamulus too. We work more with our body, bodies than we do on, on, on the risers, I think, because we have lots of more room to do it. So I love, love the things you did, Kim. And I think also to say that don't think of this part doing exercises or doing a warm up. Do it like just do it. Uh, in Swedish, ordentligt. I don't know in English. <laughs> do it with with whole your whole thing, soul and body, all the things. Yeah, that's that's really great advice, Anna. And and of course, um, that 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 has struck me that while we're rehearsing at home, we've got the whole space of the room we happen to be in. We're not stuck next to somebody on the risers. And that's something I've not thought of before. So thank you for that. Um, I've got one question for Kim. Um, and it's about that last exercise that you did about the E vowel and how that kind of leads on to other vowels. Um, and the question is, when you sing E, R, and then the va, 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 should you keep the soft palate lifted? And this is from Sarah Barron. So yeah, should you keep the what? soft palate lifted? Lovely question. Okay, so I think that when I'm singing E, when you sing E, E, your soft palate isn't really lifted. It's actually kind of in a relaxed place. And I think that we too often lift the soft palate more than is necessary. I really like the idea and concept that speech and singing are very similar. And when we speak, our soft palate isn't lifted at all. It's kind of, if you were to lift your soft palate, it would be like speaking like Mickey Mouse and hanging out. <laughs> yeah. talking, right? We don't talk like this. And that's okay. So um, when you sing E, I would actually argue that you need to let your soft palate stay in that relaxed place and not feel the need to lift. So it's the difference between E and E. That has a place for sure in more classical or traditional genres of music, but genres like barbershop and contemporary acapella and jazz go for much more that conversational kind. So I think the long, the roundabout answer is no, you should not keep the soft palate lifted. You should let it exist wherever it was on the E. So I hope that answers it. <laughs> That's, that's really good. Thank you very much for that. Um, I've got another question, actually, um, who, uh, which is from our um, outgoing team coordinator for the RMT, Hill, Hill Pinnock. And she says, um, as a low singing bass, is it critical I try to stretch my range higher? Because she says, I don't find it comfortable at all. Mm, good question. Mm. So I think that it's important to stretch and use all of your range because it's kind of a use it or lose it thing because your vocal cords are just little baby muscles and you got just like you got to go to the gym to work out and exercise. You got to work those out too. Um, so I, I guess critical feels so like, like important, you know what I mean? It's not going to be the end of the world, but 
I think that you should try to stretch your whole range. And if it's not comfortable, my question would be, is it not comfortable or does it hurt? Because if it's not comfortable, as in like, I'm just trying to explore something new that I don't have, um, I'm not as fluent in that area of my range yet, that's okay. It's okay to be a little uncomfortable because it's new. But if it physically is giving you pain, then yes, I would say stop and work with someone one-on-one to try and alleviate that. Maybe only when you're working in your upper range, use a bubble or a lip trill, um, a bubble slash a lip trill or a tongue trill, something that you know will give you that freedom and ease and range, but not um, hurt you. So if it hurts, don't do it. But- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, in fact, um, when you were doing the bubbling and managed to get up to the top C, I can imagine even basses were getting up to those high notes. Uh, and it's such a healthy way, isn't it, of, of stretching your voice. And, and I just I just wondered whether Anna had any uh, tips about singing, singing a low bass as well, whether there were any kinesthetics that Hill could use to to help that. Yes, of course, it, it's uh, uh, in Sweden, we have this, uh, put it on a silver plate, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. like it, 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 I think, it, because you have to change when you are lowering your voice, you have to get it out in the uh, mask, you say also in Swedish. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. So, so that's important. And uh, always you, you, you can try to, to stretch, as you say, and you have to do it not tensioning your, yourself. That's a hard thing sometimes. Yes, yes. That you get to, to do tensions that, that you, you, you maybe you don't even notice. So moving a lot, I think it's very good. And as you did, Kim, with also checking your... Yeah. 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 And, and um, in fact, Brit Helen used to talk about um, singing on the third floor, yeah. but on the balcony. Yeah. But I like the idea of the silver plate as well. That's a really nice image, isn't it? Yeah. To, to put your sound on the silver plate. Yeah. That's, that's great. Yeah. Uh, right. I've got a, another question from Charles, who's our, one of our techie team, who does an amazing job for the region. Um, and she says, um, Anna, uh, will you recommend doing a physical warm up just before going on stage? I'm assuming in competition. Uh, well, well, <laughs> <laughs> we, we have we have done we we have uh, usually we are rehearsing in a um, uh, gymnastic hall. You say so? Uh, the yes. Hall, yeah. yeah. When you do the, the uh, gymnastic at school and. Uh, uh, long time ago we were doing we were running in the hall and then up on the rises to sing <laughs> because we wanted to get, get that feeling of nerve and and to be a bit uh, um, yes Breathless. you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, pirig, uh, nervous <laughs> nervous um, yeah yeah so 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 but but and i think before going on stage i think it's more better to, to focus but I think also I mean quartets may do things I don't know moving before they come on the stage and we talked a lot of before to preparing for for competition that you are different we are all different some some of us want to just <laughs> some of us want to don't bother me don't disturb me. I want to be myself at myself, all by myself. So I think it's different. So do with the chorus. I I don't think it's uh, it's not wrong, but but I, I I think you have to decide as a director if you your group um, yeah. Yeah. benefit on that. So not as I mean you are going to be um, adren- your adrenaline is going to be there on stage so you don't have to help it <laughs> before <laughs> stage so it, it not too near stage at least so you can breathe and be calm and focused yeah thank you thank you for that and um i know i I've, I've been privileged to come to one of the running rehearsals um actually in stockholm which was wonderful and uh, i know that britelan used to practice the mental um check-in as well D- does that still happen i would imagine it will do yes yes it does we have uh, we, we have a physical warm-up and then we have like a breathing thing to to calm down and then we are saying something together 
and then we are singing a uh, warm up singing uh, with the voices and then in in the middle of the rehearsal usually not now when we are doing the dig digital thing uh, then we are ending the rehearsal with with uh, mental yeah. training yeah and and we are still doing that mm -hmm. uh, it learn to relax uh, and and other things so yeah. very good it's important yeah. Yes, it's it's a really good lesson to learn, isn't it? Um, I've got a question for Kim. Um, I'm just wondering how things are in Indila Indianapolis, whether you'll be able to get to face to face rehearsals in the not too distant future or what, what, the, what the situation is over there. Yeah, well, I think that all throughout the United States, everything is kind of different and depending on where you are and what your local guidelines say. Um, and in Indy, we have several choruses. It just happens. So everyone's kind of doing something different. My chorus is planning on continuing Zoom rehearsals um, until July. And this is pending a approval from my safety committee of humans that have, you know, read the details and done the work and all that good stuff. Um, but the hope is that with their approval, we can get back to some in-person rehearsals, but outdoor in July. And we're gonna start with sectionals, something I do every summer with my chorus, kind of because July is a crazy barbershop month and I end up having a lot of commitments where I have to be everywhere. Um, but also because I think it's really important to spend time in sections and allow those leaders to have some space without me watching over them. Um, so we'll start in, individual sections the second week of July and then the following week they would meet in duets so like the tenors and leads and the basses and baritones and then the following week it would be the tenors and basses and the baritones and leads and then the following week you know the last one so the whole month of July it's planning to be outside in smaller groups so hopefully as we're getting closer it'll make people feel more comfortable mm -hmm. um, and then hopefully we can meet all together but still outside in August and I think our plan is to be outside as long as we can, still taking precautions um, and listening to what our members feel most comfortable with. So. Yeah, 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 lots to think about. I think that's quite a similar situation to what's happening in the UK as well. How about Sweden? What's the situation there, Anna? Yes, it's like that too. And, and we are blessed with Jamalus because it's so much easier to be uh, uh, singing. And I think it's the most important thing is to sing. Uh, Zoom is uh, good. For, you can see all, all, yeah. all the members, but, but singing together it, through Jamalus has been a very, very good thing for us. Uh, but to keep on singing, in, in Sweden we have, we we are, we are planning to, we hope to uh, get together uh, in August or September. Uh, we hope to, mm -hmm. and, and as you say, outside or uh, in a big hall and maybe sections, like you said, yeah. say, uh, Kim. So we, we, we hope, but we, we, we just, uh, um, we pray for that. And, and uh, yeah. we don't know that the vaccine is, is uh, going up now in Sweden, at least we are, I'm going to vaccine my, do you say vaccine myself? No. You're going to be vaccinated, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to vaccinate yeah. myself. <laughs> and, so, yeah, so, and, and you don't know if, if everyone is going to do that either and that's also a thing so, so we are we are right. uh, reading the things that Sweet Analyze give us too that's also good tools for us and how you are going to do in out in the world too. that's well. yeah well let's hope let's hope we can all get together soon but at yeah. least during our virtual time we've been able to have you and Kim here with us today so you know there are benefits of being in lockdown aren't there even yes. though it might not seem so obvious yes. so can i can i thank you both once again um most sincerely for everything that you've done for staying on and answering questions and and for your wonderful presentations it's just been an absolute delight having you both here and let's hope the next time we meet it's face to face yay, yay. <laughs>
gosh. So Jeez. thank you. Thank you so much. And thanks to everybody for your questions. Um, I know there have been wonderful comments in the comments column saying thank you to both of you for, for the answers that you've given too. So I'll, I'll send those to you in an email so you can see what people have been, have been saying you. about you. All good things. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Thank you so um, much. Okay. And take so, care.